just as a reminder, uh, we ask that everyone keep in mind the guidelines set forth by the bishop and uh, we refrain from singing. Uh, Mr. Cantor will be singing today. Good morning, church family of St. Francis of Assisi. On the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, a special welcome to Bishop Medley and for those who are visiting us today. Jonah delivers a warning to Nineveh that their city will be destroyed in 40 days. After only one day, the people listened and repented. In the gospel, Jesus comes to Galilee with a call to repent and believe. Building a team committed to his mission, he invites four fishermen to follow him. Immediately, they leave their work and families to do so. We hear from Paul, whose life was changed on the road to Damascus, calling the Corinthians to conversion. Let these readings inspire us to listen and respond. Please stand. Christ Jesus, you show us the way to repentance. 
Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
how they had turned from their evil way. He repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them, and he did not carry it out. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as, they, as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. 
Glory to you, Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little further and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in the boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with their hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop Melly, it's an honor for me to present to you these young men who were baptized as children with the promise that they will be brought up in the faith and that one day they will receive through confirmation the fullness of the Holy Spirit. They have prepared for and now ready to receive the sacrament of confirmation. Please stand when I call your name. James Brian Murphy. Nicholas Christopher Murphy. James and Nicholas. <clears throat> Typically at this time, you'll, you'll get your chance. <laughs> Typically at this, I have come to church well before the mass and meet with the candidates for confirmation and give them an exam beforehand. But you know, with the rules regarding COVID, we can't separate ourselves in a room without masks and all that stuff. So I've decided I'll give you the exam right here at church in front of everyone. Is that good with you? Okay, you are very cooperative. He's nodding, yes, you do too. Okay. Well, actually, I'm not going to do that. I might have done it if I'd given you a heads up and told you that I was going to do it, but uh, it doesn't seem quite fair to spring that on you right here. So I'm going to take the word of uh, the deacon, and in a few moments I'll read a little bit from the letters that you wrote me that reassure me that you are indeed prepared for this to celebrate this sacrament. You know, when we hear Jonah's name mentioned, it is rather safe bet for most of us who remember anything about him will recall one of two things, three days in the belly of a whale or a character who seems to beg, bring bad luck wherever he is, whatever he does. Well, this surely means we must give credit to the magnificent writer of the book of Jonah in the Old Testament to have so captured our imaginations with these vivid images that those stories live. However, we will miss the purpose and the intent of Scripture if we get lost in the Jonah equals bad luck story. So first, the man Jonah. Who was he and what was he about? The Lord orders Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach to the people, for their wickedness has come before me. God has observed the wickedness of this city. But this calling doesn't bring Jonah any, no, any joy. Preach penance to pagans? Why me? Announce salvation to non-Jews? Want no part of it. Not, enough, he, uh, not an unlikely prophet. 
He flees as far as he can. He hops on a ship to go across the Mediterranean Sea. But it's not that easy. The storm, remember, bad luck follows Jonah. So the, thorn, the storms threaten to break up the ship. And the pagan sailors draw lots to, cat, to figure out who is it that's brought them this bad luck. Kind of superstitious. But who else does the lots port to but Jonah? A good fellow at heart, he suggests, okay, just throw me overboard. And they did. The sea settles, and the sailors are converted to Israel's God because they knew that that was Jonah's God. As for Jonas, the famous part of the story now, he got swallowed up by the whale, and he lived three days in its belly when it spews him out on dry land. Now, is this story literally true? Well, you know, sometimes authors in the Bible sort of frame stories to teach us a lesson. That may or may not be the case. But to follow the story, the word of the Lord, Jonah, comes to Jonah a second time, I told you to go to Nineveh. You hopped on a ship. Look what happened to you. Now get yourself to Nineveh. How do you argue with a God who has gotten you out of that last fix you got yourself in, the belly of a whale? He preaches. The people are converted. And God spares the city. You'd think Jonah would be waving a flag. But Jonah's mad. He's angry. Why should these pagan be beneficiaries of God's promise and pardon. And so Jonah blows his stack and tells God, just put him out of his misery. Just kill me now. He sulks outside the city in his own little pity party. He rests under the shade of a plant that God had provided. And any of us who have ever been outside on a hot day and found a, a pleasant shade to sit in, we can understand Ignoring, of course, that this shade was a gift from God. So when the plant withers, he lashes out against God. And now even God has had enough. I'm up to here with you. You're, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow. And you resent my pity, the people of Nineveh. In short, the Lord sort of tells Jonah, grow up. Kind of a hard story. We're left wondering if Jonah really merits being counted among the great prophets of the Old Testament. The prophets we know, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Joel, had two impressive qualities. They were obedient to the Lord, and they preached repentance. But look at Jonah. He disobeys the Lord by taking off in the opposite direction, and then refuses to preach repentance. When he finally gives in and obeys the Lord's command, he gets livid that the Ninevites actually do what he asked them to do. They actually repented. Why such a reluctant prophet? Well, the point is, the book of Jonah is really not centered on Jonah. We have to give it a name, book of Jonah. But he is, he's just a very interesting character. For the book tells us far more about God than it tells us about Jonah. Yes, we discover again how stupid a man can be how difficult for him to grasp the goodness of his God, how narrow his outlook on those who might be different, who worship even worship other gods. More important still, we glimpse through Jonah how good is God is, how loving God is. His compassion embraces every creature in the universe. All men and women are people of his caring. So all are called to repent. For note, for to repent simply means to turn to God. What this will tell us is that we are all Jonah at moments in our lives. We may sense very strongly that God is calling us to do something, but we got something else in mind. We go and do something else. Sometimes when God answers our prayer, we're not even satisfied with that, especially if he seems to answer the prayers of other people that we wonder well, are they really deserving of the goodness of God? Look what I've done for God. And look what he does for these people that don't seem to care. So we all are Jonah at some point or another in our lives. And so James and Nicholas, you are Jonah. God has called you to this day that you might be confirmed 
As the deacon noted, you were baptized when you were infants with a promise, promise from your parents that they would raise you in the practice of the faith. Today, in about a couple of minutes, you will be called upon to renew the promises of your baptism. But this time, you speak for yourself. It's not just your parents or your godparents speaking for you. Now, as I said, I like when I come to visit and do confirmations to meet with the candidates before Mass so that I can examine them and determine for myself that they are ready and prepared to be confirmed. But today I have to go on the deacon's word and letters that Nicholas and James wrote me. James wrote, uh, uh, I'm 16 and have a mom, a dad, and a younger brother. Well, we met him. <laughs> he says, I like to fish and go on motorcycle rides. I also like woodworking and anything to do with cars. He said the patron saint he chose is St. Andrew, the patron saint of fishermen. I've chosen him for, real, for several reasons, the first being that Andrew was the brother of Simon Peter, and Jesus called them to be fishers of men. That's the gospel story we hear today. They were, set, they were standing there, minding their own business, cleaning their nets after they had fished, and Jesus said, come and follow me, I will make you fishers of men. James enjoys fishing, so he sees a parallel there. And I also want to share, he says, my beliefs and faith with others. Another reason I chose St. Andrew is because he is the patron saint of unmarried women. And he notes that both of his grandmothers are without spouses now, and that they're very important people to him. And so he gives Andrew to them uh, as an example. His sponsor is Joseph Alexander, who is a neighbor and friend. He's a quiet guy who currently serves as a pilot in the Army, which is something I'd like to do, James says. He also shares the same religious beliefs with me. I ask them when they write me these letters to tell me why they might have uh, uh, chosen that patron saint, so he, uh, a patron saint. And so they, he explained that and why they, he chose his sponsor and explained that. Uh, I also ask them to tell me their favorite scripture passage. Now, I'm going to guess that probably neither of them could have told you a favorite scripture passage until they had to write this letter. <laughs> Pretty good bet. That was, my, that was my sneaky intent. That meant they had to open up the Bible and find a favorite scripture passage. So James' favorite scripture passage says, Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding the hands of sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one, or as one that traveleth, and that I want as an armed man. He said, I like this. Because he tells me if you're lazy in life, you'll have no accomplishments to show for yourself. Now, Nicholas also wrote me a letter saying that he was 15 and the youngest in his family. So we've got the oldest and the youngest. Uh, <clears throat> he says, I like cooking, building things, hanging out with my friends. I spend a lot of my free time in the kitchen. Now, I'll just bet you at the end of this Mass, I'm going to find out that Nicholas has baked a cake for me. And I'm going to take home. So he's, he's, I, as soon as I read that paragraph, I thought, that's what's going to happen. And he said, I kind of like the artistic side of cooking, and I like to eat what I make. So when he said that, I thought, oh, it's not just going to be a cake, it's going to be a fancy cake. So, so we'll see. He, the saint that he chose is St. Honoré of Amiens. He chose St. Honoré because... Uh, Honoré is a patron saint of bakers, bread in particular, and a uh, patron saint of bakers and pastry chefs. I like the fact that he's also a generous saint, and generosity is something I strive for. It says his sponsor is family friend and neighbor, Victoria Alexander. I chose Mrs. Vicky because she's a friend whom my family shares a lot with. She also has a love of cooking and baking, and we learn a lot from each other. I think she will make a good sponsor because I trust her, and she says not only the same interest with me, but also the same faith. And his scripture passage is from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said with man, some things are impossible with God, all things are possible. And Nicholas says, it's just so true and reminds me of what can do, what God can do, and what I can do with God. This is the reason I chose to be Catholic. God's love is almighty and truthful. So they wrote such fine letters, I don't feel so bad about not being able to give them an exam before, before coming here. And I have a feeling 
that if I had told them that I was really going to ask some questions here in front of the whole church, they'd have been okay with that too. They seem to be. So, but I won't put them on the spot. That would probably make their parents more nervous than they are. <laughs> My young friends, you are about to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, oftentimes, when I have larger groups, I will ask the church, after your names have been called, do you believe these young men are ready and prepared? And certainly their parents would have known, but others of you may know these two young men, and you'd gladly said, yes, they're ready and prepared. And then I would ask, do you think they're worthy to be confirmed? And almost invariably, the whole church says, yes, they're worthy to be confirmed. And then I say, no, they're not. And I'd say the same about these two young men. Are they ready and prepared? Yes. Are they worthy? Well, no. Nothing personal. But who could be worthy to receive the Holy Spirit? As an example. In a few moments, the whole church will come forward to receive Holy Communion. But the last thing we say before we come to receive Holy Communion is, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So whether or not you just made your first communion, or you've been going to Holy Communion for 40, 50, 60, 70 years, every time, every time we say, I am not worthy, because who could be worthy to receive Christ's body and blood? And the same thing for the Holy Spirit. Who could be worthy to receive the Holy Spirit? And yet, God desires that we come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ. Even though we're not worthy, God accepts us in our unworthiness. James and Nicholas, even though you are not worthy to receive the Holy Spirit, God desires to present to you the Holy Spirit. So, in the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, right judgment, fear of the Lord. <clears throat> gifts are not given to you to just put in a box and put away. The best kind of gifts in life are gifts that we're able to share. For example, it hadn't been that many weeks since Christmas. I received a very nice box of chocolates. Chocolate candy. For Christmas. I like chocolate candy. I could have eaten the whole box, trust me. But the great thing about a box of candy is you can open it up and you share. And you not only find joy, but you bring joy to others and you don't gain 10 pounds if you don't eat the whole box by yourself. The gifts of the Holy Spirit that you're going to receive are meant to be shared. Your wisdom, your understanding, your fortitude, your piety, all those are gifts that God intends for you to share with others. So although these gifts strengthen and empower you, through you, God strengthens and empowers your family, your cousins, uh, this larger church that know you. So make a resolve today that you will be different because you've received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You will be more generous. You will be more kind. You'll be more honest. Got it? Okay. At this time, I'm going to ask the two young men to stand. And today, as I said, you will renew your own promises of baptism. Uh, these same promises were made on the day you were baptized by your parents and godparents. But today, you speak for yourself. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. 
This is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, typically at this time, uh, I would say a prayer, and then each of these young men would come forward, and both Father Al and I would place our hands upon their head, symbolizing the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. In the days of pandemic and COVID, I will say the same prayer, but the touching will be by virtue of the holding of our hands out over you. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons, <clears throat> already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Confirmation, Saint? Saint Andrew. Andrew, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Your confirmation, Saint Honore. Honore, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. All the church would stand now. Confident that God hears the prayers of all who call upon Him, let us present our petitions to the Lord. For the church, trusting in Jesus' constant presence that we may be apt to bring the reign of God to realization in the world. Loving God and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our nation, that we may repent for the wrongs we have done, whose repercussions continue to be felt, and the wrongs that we continue to do, and turn to the source of life and goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from want, from lack of shelter, heat, <laughs> adequate nutrition, or health care, that they may find sustenance of hope in the generosity of those with plenty, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women religious who have taken the heart of Jesus, called to follow him, that they might be blessed in the work they do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may always be willing to look into our own hearts and repent and return to the Lord when we have strayed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, today we lift up Father Frank and all of those reading the book of the sick, that Jesus bring them comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly confirmed, Nicholas and James, and their parents and sponsors, that the Holy Spirit manifest in them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, 
Today we lift up Ed Slack. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, and, God. Oh. and for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles, and willed that through them and their successors, that same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably to our prayer, and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rightly gives you praise. 
ways. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Assisi, St. Stephen, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other an appropriate sign of peace. See you soon. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey, can you have any announcements? Uh, please be seated. It's going to take a while. <laughs> it's my homily now. <laughs> no, um, two, just two announcements. Uh, I know we just finished a uh, week of prayer for Christian unity. Uh, in our ecumenical that we have uh, together here in Tad County, uh, every year after that week, uh, we gather together uh, with a festival of hymn. Now this year is it's going to be virtual. So uh, when you leave today, there is a program for that. And on Thursday, I will send you uh, a link at least for the Facebook, where they're going to be, is a Lady and Minister Alliance of Todd County. Uh, but I'm going to send you by email. Hopefully, everybody, I have everybody's email. If not, you can look in our Facebook, the church Facebook. I, I'm also going to put that link there. So you have a different cho choices, email or our Facebook page. Okay, that's going to be on Thursday, uh, Thursday night at 6 o'clock. So look for that. Another one is an update about Father Frank. He's, he's back. He, is, he came on Thursday night late uh, to the uh, Hearthstone uh, nursing home. And he's going to be there for a little bit. He told me to tell you his goal is to be there or to be home in two weeks. You understand it's a very aggressive goal, but he's it's, it's going to try to do that. But he needs our prayer, okay? Uh, he has the positive attitude, and, and uh, he's, he answers emails. If you want to send him emails, he will answer your email. And uh, he responded to some his uh, texts, too. So he can text. He's doing good. I know it was a big fall, but he's... Uh, I'm sure the bleeding in the brain stopped and he's better. Okay? Birthdays. I forgot to tell Bishop Melly about this. <laughs> Anyone celebrating birthday this week? Mr. Patrick. Okay, the 
person will come up front and you give a, a blessing mm -hmm. or so. That's the normal. He was there way across uh, six feet. Okay. Please, everybody else there. May the Lord bless you as we celebrate your birthday. Let us above all praise God, for it is by His hand you were created in His very image and likeness. Go forth to celebrate that reality and share it with others, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's uh, give a hand to James. I hope that when you see me in the future, whether it's here at St. Francis or our paths cross someplace else, perhaps you'll come to some of the events for youth in the diocese. Uh, I always, I've been the bishop for 11 years. And in that time, I confirm about 400 a year. So I've confirmed about 4,400 young people, I'm guessing. But you're the two most special ever. <laughs> you believe that? It's true because my philosophy of life is whatever the Lord is having me do today is the most important thing I've ever done. And so celebrating with this church and particularly confirming these two young men is, is, is a great thrill. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I do hope that you would sometimes people that I've confirmed will come up to me and say, Bishop, you confirmed me. That pleases me. So I hope when you see me, you'll you'll tell me that. And if you do, now remember, I didn't get to ask you questions today. <laughs> but if you come up to me and tell me I confirmed you, I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> but you don't have to be nervous because I'm going to tell you right now what the question is. And I'm going to give you the answer. How much easier does it get? If you ever come up and tell me that I confirmed you, my question will be, are you still holy? And the answer is yes. Because God made you. You can do a lot to mess it up. You can do a lot to fall away. But God made you holy. And you can't change that. Got it? All right. The Lord be with you. With your sister, bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May the Lord let his face to shine upon you. Amen. May the Lord bring you peace. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
stay put.